Hello everyone, let's see what we can make out of this mountain landscape image. For the editing process I will be using Photoshop and if you plan on following along you can find a link to the raw file in the description of the video. First we need to do the raw adjustments, which I will be doing in the camera raw editor and the first thing I'm doing is to set a profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will slightly brighten up the darkest parts and in turn it just lessens the contrast. I think for this image this looks quite good since less contrast creates a rather soft look. Now let's expand the basic panel. Besides that soft look I also want this image to be a little warmer and that's the reason for me to just bring up the temperature a notch. I don't want to go too warm but this is looking pretty good. We still have some colder tones in there. And for the next step, I do think we need to play around with the exposure a bit, since overall you can see this shot is rather dark. So let's fix that by bringing up the exposure. So right at this point, the upper area kind of looks blown out, but don't worry, we can fix that quite easily by just bringing down the highlights. And in turn, we just get a little more details, especially in those areas around the clouds. Now exposure wise I don't think we need to do much more. You can see looking at this gram it looks quite good. It is still on the darker side but for the mood of this image I think it fits quite well. So next up I'd like to bring up the texture adding a little bit of sharpness to the smaller details and at the same time let's improve that soft look by just gently dropping the clarity. And we can further work on that effect by bringing down the dehaze. Just keep in mind, if you bring down the dehaze, everything will get a little brighter. And finally, I do want the image to look a little more saturated, so I'm going to bring up the vibrance. Just like that. Wonderful. And here we have the image after the basic raw adjustments. So we went from this rather dark version to this shot. For the next step I do want to target a few areas locally, that means we are going to make use of a bit of masking. First off, what I want to do with this image is to bring out those rocks under the water and of course that tree lock in the water itself. So let me just create a radial gradient covering most of that area in the foreground, just like that. And first off I want to make it brighter so I'm going to raise the exposure, getting some more attention in this area. I also want to make it more vibrant, so let's raise the saturation quite a lot. And then to make the rocks beneath the surface of the water more visible, I'm going to use clarity. And I'm going to use quite a lot here. And for a little extra sharpness, I'm going to bring up the texture as well. Perfect. Let me deactivate this mask so you can see the difference from before to after. Then let's see, I do want to add another linear gradient covering those rocks in the foreground, just like this. I'm going to just apply it very, very roughly. And in here I do want to bring up the highlights, adding just a bit more contrast to this image. I also want to increase the blacks, actually just, let's just bring it up a bit. And I do want to further bring down the temperature in here just to make this part a little colder. And finally, let's raise the clarity some more. So that's looking like a pretty good spot. I'm quite happy with the foreground, so now let's work on the upper part of the image. Again, I'm just using a simple linear gradient and I'm targeting pretty much everything except the water, just like that. What I want to do here is I want to start by increasing the contrast. And next up, I do want to make the darkest areas just a bit darker so we get even more contrast and I'm doing that by simply dropping the shadows. Let's drop them some more, just like that. At the same time, looking at this again, we do have some more room left on the brighter side, so I'm going to bring up the whites and in turn just again increase the contrast. And finally, let's see if we can increase the clarity to give those clouds some structure, making everything a little more interesting up there. I think this looks pretty good. However, we could also add a bit of negative dehaze, 
just to keep that overall softness. All right, I think that is great. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. We went from this version to this one. Again, much, much better. And I think we are pretty much done. So let's see what we can do with the color grading. I'm going to head into the color mixer. And what I don't like about the colors is the green tones. They are a little too far on the blue side. So I'm going into the hue tab and just bring down the green hue. Very, very slightly. I want to keep a natural green tone just like that. Now let's head over into the saturation tab and bring up the green saturation. I'm also going to increase the blue saturation just a notch like that. Perfect. And finally, I do want to head into the luminance tab and again, just raise the green luminance, making those colors a little brighter. Perfect. Now let's see, maybe we can apply a little bit of split toning. I just want to target the shadows right here. And I'm aiming for a very subtle blue tone like this. Now let's bring up the saturation. This might be a bit too much. So I think I'm just going with something around five. Now, what can we do next? I think this image would do great with a bit of vignetting. So I'm heading into the effects tab and I'm just bringing down that vignetting slider. All right. Finally, I want to open the calibration tab and I want to push the blue primary saturation some more to make the image a little more vibrant. Okay, that looks great to me. Now, one more thing. Before we are heading into Photoshop, I do want to apply some sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add the masking. So only the important areas will get sharpened. And then of course, increase the amount of sharpening. Just like that. Wonderful. And that's it for the raw adjustments. So that's the original image. And here we have the edited raw version. Now we want to do some finer adjustments using a bit of Photoshop. So let's open up this object. What I want to do first is to clean up this shot. So I'm going to duplicate that the first layer by hitting Ctrl J. Now let's grab the spot healing brush and just get rid of this patch right there in the bottom right corner. Wonderful. Then there are some things right there in the background. I also want to just brush over them using the spot healing brush. Okay. And the power lines up there, of course. All right. I just did it very roughly again. I don't think those small lines will be visible even if you're printing this image later. So let's see, we can still get rid of a few sensor spots up here. But all in all, this looks like a pretty clean image. So next up, I do want to do a little bit of dodging and burning. For that reason, let me create a new layer and switch the blending mode to overlay. Now for dodging and burning, I'm making use of the TK panel plugin. If you don't have this paid plugin, there is a free version available with all the needed tools to do the exact same thing I will be doing in a moment. So. First off, my goal is to make those clouds in the forest and up here just a little brighter. This means we want to dodge the highlights. And to do that, I am first going to select the proper mask from the lights mask selection. And I think I'm just going with the lights one mask. I'm going to activate layer mask mode, click on one, and we have that selection on our overlay layer. Then I'm hitting B to select the brush. Set the foreground color to white since we want to make things brighter. And I'm also going to bring down the brush opacity to around 15% or something like that. And then I'm just starting to carefully paint over all those areas I want to make brighter. So that's the image with the dodging. And here it is without dodging applied. Looks much better, but I think it's a bit heavy in the center parts. I'm going to use the eraser by pressing E and I'm going to drop the eraser opacity as well. And I'm just going to brush over the center to bring back a little bit of darkness right there. All right, but that looks much, much better. Now I also want to burn the shadows. And again, I'm creating a new layer for that. Again, switch the blending mode to soft light, 
make use of the TK pedal plugin. And since we want to target the shadows, we need to make use of those darks masks. Let's see. Those are targeting a little bit too much for my taste. So I'm going further down in the menu. I think darks free works quite good. So again, activate layer mask mode, click on free, and there we have it. With the brush tool active, I'm going to change the foreground color to black since we want to make things darker and then just again start to paint over a few areas. And thus, we're just adding some very nice contrast to this image. Wonderful. I don't think I need to do any more burning, otherwise it would be a way too strong effect. So this is looking very, very good. Next up, I just want to add a bit more detail to a few areas. Therefore, let me merge all those layers hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. And with that layer, I'm going to apply a Nick Collection filter. Again, this is a paid plugin, but it's really useful. And what I'm doing here is you can already see I have selected the Details Extractor filter, which you, as you can see, just adds a lot more detail to the image. Right now, this looks very, very strange. We could maybe bring down the saturation a bit but otherwise just apply it like that. Okay, obviously this effect is way too strong. What I want to do next is to hold down the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon. This will create a black layer mask with which we can work now. Again, I'm just selecting the brush by pressing B, set the foreground color to white since I want to erase parts of that layer mask and reveal the underlying detail extractor effect. We could maybe bring up the opacity of the brush just like that. Now I'm just starting to paint over the foreground and thus adding more detail to the image. We could also play around with those clouds back there, giving them some more detail as well. But I think this should be enough already. Let me deactivate the layer so you can see the difference from before to after. Much better. At this point, we might lack a little bit of saturation. So let's go ahead and add a vibrance adjustment layer. Just bring up the vibrance. And at this point, I am pretty happy with this image. So that's it for the post-processing. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.